Facebook ads. I draw your attention to a brief word taken from the book of Acts, chapter 17. And I'll read a few verses there. Acts chapter 17. Without him, I would be nothing. Without him, I would fail. Without him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sea. And I'll begin from verse 16, just going very quickly. And this is talk about Paul at Athens. Now while Paul waited for them at Athens, his spirit was stirred in him when he saw the city wholly got given to idolatry. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and, the mark, and in the market daily with them that met with him. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him and some said, what will the, um, this babbler say? Others, the other, some said, he seemed to be a set of forth of Spain gods because he preached unto them Jesus and the resurrection. And they took him and brought him unto Argos, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speakest is? For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. For all the Athenians and strangers, which were there, spend their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things, Ye are too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with this inscription to the unknown God, whom therefore ye ignorantly worship. Him declare I unto you. And I just pause here. And my theme here tonight is the unknown God, whom ye work we may ignorantly worship him, the clear eye unto you, and that's the theme. The unknown God, him, the clear eye unto you, and those words were spoken by Paul at Mars Hill in Athens. I know quickly, I'm just re looking at the, the previous verses. I see here where Paul in his ministry and his mission, he traveled to a number of, of cities um, preaching Christ. And many of the persons were concerned. They were, you know, you know, just concerned and they, they, they didn't understand what according to them, this new doctrine, this new message that he was preaching, because the city was not one that really gave heed to Christ's teaching. They were more so in, engaged in, in, in um, idolatry and those sort of things. And therefore, when they heard Paul preaching, you know, stern and preach over the words of God, they could not understand. So they thought he, he was a babbler, just, you know, run up his mouth. And he was talking to him, he didn't really understand. That's what they thought. But then when he heard their language, when he heard what they were saying, and when he saw the inscription that they wrote, he realized that they were in ignorance. And when persons are in ignorance, it means that they need some form of sympathy or empathy because then they, it's not that they don't understand. It. And you have to bear with them. You have to give heed to them and see if you can help them one way or another to change their mindset. Because one scripture says, maybe you're a philosopher. You know, you know, strange, they come up with strange things. So when you see people talk things, and you know definitely what you're preaching is the right thing, and they don't understand, you just have to bear with them. So here, Paul, here in verse 22, after he said to them, um, I saw your inscription, the writings that they had there, they wrote so boldly. Because they, did, they didn't know. They thought well, that's what they were doing was the right thing. And they were worshipping a God who they didn't even understand. 
And in their mind, this unknown God was the same Jesus, but they didn't understand fully who he was. So they say, here is a God, we don't understand him fully. So he's unknown, we don't understand him. What can we do to, to really get the full, they didn't get the full revelation of him? And Paul said, when he realized they're ignorant, he said, okay, you have an inscription, you have a writing, you are searching for knowledge, you are searching for understanding, because the understanding was that was darkened, and Paul had to help them in this way. So Paul said, okay, you are serving a God who you don't know, but him declare I unto you. So this God you are talking about, who you claim to be unknown, he is the same God that made the world. He is the same God who made all things therein. Because in Psalm 24, it says, the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. He founded upon the seas. He established upon the floods. So here, they didn't understand the same unknown God that they were referring to was the same God who made the whole earth from the beginning. He was the same God who Moses and the prophets and the Psalms spoke about. They didn't understand that because in, in St. Luke 24, Jesus said even to his own disciples who didn't understand, he said that everything that was written from the, the Moses right through was talking about him, but they didn't understand it. So when we see, the, the, I mean, these Epicureans and, and these, these persons, they didn't understand what they were talking. It, it, it tells us then that they were in ignorance. And Paul, being knowledgeable and getting the revelation, had to tell them that the same unknown God that they have the big writing about their inscription, he was going to let them know forthwith that this unknown God is the God who made the entire world. He is the same God of yesteryear. He is the same God in Psalm uh, 19, which made heaven and the earth. And it says, earth declare the glory of God, and the firmament showed it and the work. Day unto day are the earth speech, and night unto night show it knowledge. So the same unknown God is showing us that whether it be day or night, sometimes we can see the, you know, the workings of God even in the skies. And my, people have been a wonder. Just had to pause here. I can remember one day, I think it was yesterday, my little grandson, he was out in the, the front and he looked up in the sky because he's just two, two, yeah, two plus. And I had him one day, I was saying, um, because he knows all the colors. So I said, Ralph, look, the sky, the white clouds. And look at the sky, blue sky. And he was just there focusing on the sky being blue and the clouds being white. So he looked up on the sky in the clouds by himself and he recognized the moon. In the evening it was. And he saw the moon in the sky, a little baby. And he was just saying, moon, moon. <laughs> and when we heard him saying the moon, I looked up and saw that he, it was about four or five o'clock there. And he saw the moon in the sky and he was saying, moon, moon. And when I looked up and recognized he was seeing the moon of a little baby. I said, wow, he recognized the moon as a babe. So these persons, not even realizing that the God of gods, he put the moon up in the sky for us to understand his magnificence, his power, his glory, his, you know, all the things about him. And if a little baby, two years of age, can look up in the sky and see a moon and say, moon, focus on the moon and say, moon, several times and draw our attention to the moon, it, it is wonderful. It is marvelous. It is saying that God is great. It is saying that God is awesome. And here Paul is telling the people who are talking about an unknown God. He's saying, him, declare I unto you that he's the same God who made the moon, who made the stars, who made the heavens, who made the earth, who rolled thunder, who caused lightning, who sent snow, and he sent all of these things. The same God is God I'm declaring tonight to somebody who may not even realize that this God is not an unknown God, is a real God, is a true God, the everlasting Father, and he's the Prince of Peace. So Paul continues saying, this God is neither being worshipped with man's hand. We can't just form and make you know, like a normal potter. When I was in college and there, I was doing art, art and craft, and they were teaching us to, all, all to use, you know, different, different substances to make art work. And we can't make a form and say that it's God. No, we can't make certain things and say that it's God. We can only appreciate what God himself has done. 
we may try, yes, to make different art forms and say, yes, they are beautiful because God give us knowledge and God give us, you know, all the, the, the wisdom how to appreciate things. So a man will make a little thing like a bird and we appreciate that. So oh, man is making bird. But the bird that they make, that bird cannot make a sound like the bird that God makes. And therefore, it is telling us that this unknown God that they are worshipping is a God, is not a wood and stone, but is a God who, who caused thunder to roll. And is a God who caused the lightning to flash. But when the lightning flash, man can stand and know that this God is outstanding, is different from any other idol God that was happening in Athens or in Mars Hill or wherever else. This unknown God that they spoke about is a different sort of God. He caused breath to, to, uh, to, to be in mankind. And nobody else can put breath in any of these art forms that they may try to make. It said, and as made of one blood and nation. So God made all of us in different, different forms. And our whole essence where God created us is to praise him, to make mention that his name be exalted. It says, for in him, in this God, in him, we move and have our being. In him, we live. And in him, we move. And in him, we have our being. And it says also, for as much then as we are an offspring of God, we are not to think of God as gold or silver, because the God we are serving is not an idol. The God we are serving is a true and living God. The God we are serving is righteous, is holy, you know, is, you know, is authentic, you know, is genuine, is not false, is not an idol. And Paul says, in the clear I am to you. And tonight I'm declaring also this God who some may say is unknown because we can't see him with our natural eyes. We can only vision him in the spirit. We can only feel him when he comes down our bodies in the form of the Holy Ghost. When he anoints us or when he, you know, he empowers us and we can speak in another, another language, we can have a true interaction with him and know that the, the feeling that we are feeling, it is not of ourselves because we cannot speak of ourselves. We cannot do anything of ourselves unless God speaks through us. So this God is from the beginning. He is the beginning and he is the end. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. And without him, there's nothing made. He's the wonderful counselor. He's the mighty God. He's the everlasting father. And he's the prince of peace. And no wonder Jeremiah said, he felt like fire shut up in his bone. When he talk about God, when he tried to you know, perceive, when he tried to conceptualize the goodness and the reality of God, he said he felt like fire shut up in his bones. And even sometimes when we are in church, and we feel the goodness of God. It, it let us feel that we are walking on, you know, I don't even know how to describe it. Because God is so good to us. When God comes on in human form. And when he gives us a touch of his glory on earth. We are much to be thankful for. So I'm saying in closing. That this unknown God that Paul spoke about. In the clear eye also unto you tonight. That he is the beginning. And he is the ending. He is the last. And he's the first, he's Alpha, and he's Omega, the beginning and the end. And without him, there's nothing made that was made. And to God be the glory, great things he has done. And tonight, that's the conclusion of this little message. To God be the glory, great things he has done. And I trust that somebody tonight who is still in ignorance or who may not fully understand who God really is. We cannot even sometimes comprehend him in totality, but we know a little about him. And for the little that we know, we want to help to, to spread the, the good tidings to somebody far and near. We know that this God in whom we serve is able. This God in whom we serve is the same yesterday. He's the mighty deliverer, and he is able to save to the uttermost. To God be the glory, great things he has done.